it's time to learn a completely different technique in Blender. We're going to use the sculpting tool. Open up Blender and click General on the splash screen. We still don't need any of those, so press A for Select All and X for Delete and click Delete. Today we're going to be studying the sculpting tool and for that I thought we'd just make a simple bracelet. Press Shift A for Add, select Mesh and go down and pick Taurus, the donut. Press the full stop on the numpad just to zoom in and click on the bottom left hand corner where it says add torus. Play around with the major or minor radiuses a little bit. I'm going to make it slightly skinnier like so. So there I have a major radius of 1.2 meters and a minor radius of 0.13 meters. That's fine. And I'm going to press S for scale, Z for Z direction only, and I'm just going to make it ever so slightly fatter like that. Okay, left click. And in the top right hand corner where it says Taurus, just double click that to rename it. And we're going to call it bracelet underscore original. <laughs> and I'm going to spell it right and press enter. I don't want to get too much into it now, but because we scaled this bracelet in the Z direction, it's going to distort any sculpting we do. For a bit of housekeeping, I wanted to press Control A. We scaled it in the Z direction, so click Scale. And I'm going to use this as the original in case I want to make any changes later on. So just press Shift D to duplicate. Right click to confirm. And in the top right hand corner where it says bracelet original 01, I want you to change that name to bracelet underscore sculpt and press enter. And the eyeball beside the bracelet original, just switch that off to hide it. And we're ready to go into sculpt mode. So in the top left hand corner where it has object mode, just click on the drop down list there and select sculpt mode. And here we are. In the top right hand corner, I want you to click Dyntopo. It'll give you a warning, but just click OK. And on the drop down list there, I want you to change the detail size to about three. And also I want you to click on the symmetry in the X and Y direction. So you'll see when I hover my brush, that blue circle is the brush. Anytime I hover over a space, it's giving me another three dots. And basically that's because the symmetry is on. If I turn off one of the, say I turn off the Y symmetry, I should only get two dots. So whatever I do in one side of the Y plane is also going to happen on the far side. So I'm just going to switch back on the X and the Y there. All the details for your brush are on the top there. Or you can right click and it'll bring up the radius and the strength, which is the thing you'll be changing the most, to be honest with you. Um, middle scroll wheel is still zoom in and zoom out. Press and hold your middle scroll wheel is still moving around the shape. So we're just going to freestyle this to get an idea for what each of the tools on the left hand side do. Um, and then I want you to play around with it, basically. So the first thing we come up with is draw. So if I just press and hold my uh, left mouse button and move the mouse around, you see it's drawing a little circle there. If I reduce the radius, it will draw with a smaller radius. Easy peasy. And you can see because I have symmetry switched on, it's doing it not just where I'm drawing it, but in four other places as well, like so. Okay, the next one on the list, draw sharp. It's more or less the same as draw, except it's going to give it a sharp edge. Um, I don't use it that often, to be honest with you, but uh, sometimes you'll find you'll need it. So there we go. That's draw sharp. The next one down is clay. And this is just like adding clay on. There we go. <laughs> you see, wherever it crosses the axis, Wherever it crosses the axis, it obviously doubles up on what you're doing. Like so. 
Next one down is clay strips. If you're a sculptor, you'll know that sometimes you cut clay strips to the same thickness. And that's what this is doing. It's just gonna lay down these like clay strips and sections. It's great for roughing out your sculpt. Oh, the other thing I forgot to say, each of these brushes, if you click on the drop down uh, menu for brush, you want to click front faces only on all of them. It doesn't, um, each brush is different. And we don't want to affect the inside of the shape because this is for 3D printing basically. So just make sure that front faces only is always selected. So where were we? We've done clay strips. Clay thumb is like you'd imagine. It's like you're digging your thumb into the clay and just pushing it. Gives a very nice effect. Kind of shoves it out to the edge like so. The next one is layer, very similar to draw, except that the height that it's working to is capped. So it looks like it's drawing, you're putting down a solid layer. You can see there. So it's like you were drawing, but the top is never gonna go past a certain point. So it gives a nice flat top, like so. The next one is inflate. Again, this sort of, these are pretty self-explanatory, but if you um, just press and hold your mouth button, you see it's like it's inflating a little balloon. Say if you wanted like a decorative beading around the edge, you could use the inflate button there. Just add like a few little beads to the side of it there. Like so. Actually, I'm gonna follow down that line, I think, with the little inflated blobs. Now, I shouldn't say inflated blobs, blobs because the next one is actually called blob. Now you might be saying, well, what's the difference between blob and inflate? And to be honest with you, I'm not sure, but I asked the Blender catalog and it said that the inflate is similar to draw, except the vertices in inflate mode are displaced in the direction of their own normals. And with blob, the mesh is pushed inwards or outwards into a spherical shape. So, I mean, it's giving you very similar results, but uh, there's obviously a mathematical difference between the two of them. So there we go. This one is blob. So I'm just adding that there down the center line there. Okay, so what else do we have? What's this one? Crease. So this is um, like doing an edge crease in the mesh. So it's just basically pinching the vertices together and giving you a bit of a more defined edge. So you can see I'm just gonna run it along that little valley there and it's increasing the definition there. This one here, smooth, does what it says. So you can see where I've creased it there. So if I use the smooth tool, I can kind of smooth that back out. Uh, this one here, flatten, um, it's gonna try create a flat plane as best it can. So you can see there, if I just move it along there, you can see that it's given it kind of a plateau. I just use it there as well. Why not? Okay, this one here, Fill, so this is if you have two, say you have a valley, basically, it's gonna try fill the valley. So if I use it on, I'll go for something that's a bit closer together. I would try here. It tried to fill the gap in the valley, basically. Scrape does exactly what you imagine scrape would do. It's like you're scooping out the clay. Now we have pinch. And what Pinch is trying to do, it's trying to bring the vertices towards the center of the brush. So just pop that in there like that, see what it does. Yeah. So I'll try it in between two inflate buttons. That's nice, it kind of gives a nice bit of definition between those two. Um, this one here, grab, is basically just grab a vertex and pull it. So I'm just gonna pull that up like that. 
Give you some nice little horns on the side of the bracelet. <laughs> like so elastic to form again this is just if you have a sh an existing shape and you want to move it a little bit it'll pull the vertices around like that oh sorry i grabbed the wrong one there i'll just pull that outwards like so snake hook this one's great just grab the vertex and pull it up and it'll just go up into a lovely spike like that usually when you make a snake hook it's too uh it's too skinny and if you want to just inflate it then use your inflate brush on it and it'll give it a bit of thickness just so you're not working on something that's that will never print basically it's gonna build that up there like so where were we sorry that was snake hook this one here thumb so the thumb, what it, what it's doing is it's flattening the area in the brush area. So that's your circle outline, and then it's trying to push it in the direction of the brush, basically. Yeah. Uh, what else do we have? Pose. I'm not going to go into pose now. Nudge is very similar to the thumb. It's doing the same thing. It's like uh, moves the vertices in the direction of the brush stroke. So I'm just going to use it like that. You can see they're moving up ever so slightly. Rotate is a great one. I'm going to increase the radius a little bit like so. And you just click and hold and then rotate your mouse around like so and it grabs and rotates them it's great for getting a really instantaneous effect i'm going to use it there like so very nice and there we go now i think that's enough to get going with so um just go back and you'll find that you tend to use some tools more than others I would intend to use draw and inflate quite a lot actually and say um, not draw sharp but pinch is also a really handy one for increasing definition. Um, so just play around with it for a while and see what you come up with. So that was our test piece um, just to go through all the different brushes. I'm going to go back into object mode and I'm going to delete that one. Um, and I'm going to turn back on the original bracelet, click on it, shift D for duplicate. I'm going to change the name up here to bracelet sculpt, press enter, turn the eyeball off beside the original. Um, and I'm going to go back into sculpt mode, turn on the X and Y symmetry, turn on the dying topo set to three and I'm going to have another go knowing what I know now basically so I'm going to speed this bit up I want you guys to have fun with all the different sculpting tools and see what you come up with
Okay, so that's what you get if you don't head out with any particular direction in mind. I really enjoy using the sculpting tool, but obviously that <laughs> that's a little bit freeform even for me. In the next video, we're going to be working on a piece of Ireland's Viking history. We're going to be making the Fishamble Fenrir. This was a wooden token that was found in Fishamble Street in Dublin. It dates back to the Viking era. They think it's a wolf eating the sun, which would be Fenrir, or it could be eating a moon. We're not sure. That would make it a different wolf. But anyway, we're going to tackle that by creating a basic mesh that more or less looks like the finished piece, and then we're going to sculpt on top of that. And that's a really nice way of making sure that all your dimensions are correct and at the same time having a little bit of freedom. It's a nice halfway house and... I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you would like to buy me a coffee, then there is a link in the description. And I will see you in the next video. See you then.